Hello, and welcome to the Linux command line video series. In this video, we will cover the commands for looking at binary files. So far, we have been looking at the contents of text files, files that contain characters that we can read. Next, we are going to take a look at non-text files or binary files. Binary files are not meant for humans to look at because they are encoded in a way that only makes sense to a computer. An example is a graphics file. If you're looking at the ones and zeros that comprise the pixels of a graphic file, that probably does not make sense to a human, but a computer can render that into a picture. The command xxd will display the contents of a file in hexadecimal format. The output of xxd is going to be organized into three column groups. The first column is the byte offset in hexadecimal, followed by a colon. In this case, we are starting at the beginning of the file, so the offset will start at zero. The second column group is the data in hexadecimal format. So if you look here, 45 in hex, 75 in hex, 72 in hex, 6f in hex, and so forth. That's the data. And the third group, third column group, is going to be the ASCII representation of that corresponding hexadecimal data. So if you know ASCII code, then you will know that capital E in hexadecimal is 45. Lowercase u is 75, lowercase r is 72, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look at a graphic file next, in particular a JPEG file. Let's cd into the folder first so we'll have less typing later on. So we'll cd into this particular folder and then do an ls to list out what's in here. And you see that there's five files in here. So the file that we are interested in is called syslinux underscore splash dot jpeg. So let's go ahead and run xxd on this file. And what we're going to do is we're gonna pipe the output of xxd into head and only look at the first three lines because that's what we're interested in for now. So once we hit return, we see that there's three lines, right, as the output from XXD. The first line has three columns. The first column group is the offset. So starting at byte zero, you see FF, D8, FF, E0, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tail of this same file. Okay, so the last line of the file is offset at this hexadecimal byte offset, and it ends in 6C FFD9. So what I want you to notice here is that the first two bytes of this JPEG file starts with FFD8. And then the last two bytes is FFD9. This is known as the file signature or magic number of a file. And it is used to identify the contents of a file. Most data files will have some kind of a signature, a unique signature. So a Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, etc., would have their own unique signatures. A PNG file would have its own signature. A GIF file would have its own signature. SQLite databases will have a signature. MP4 movie files has a signature. Now that you've seen the concept of file signature and looked at it manually, let's use the computer to do it in a more automated fashion with the file command. The file command will identify the file type of whatever file you give it as an input. So for example, if we just say file of syslinux splash.jpg, 
you can see that the program was identified as a JPEG. And it adheres to the JFIF standard version 1.01, 1 .01, et cetera, et cetera. And then it has a resolution of 640 by 480. To take a look at all the files in this particular folder, we can do file space star. The star is a wildcard character that will match all of the files in the current folder. So from the results, you can see that it ran it on the first file, m16-640 by 640-syslinux.jpg. It identified that as a JPEG file. Uh, I guess the dimensions is 640 by 480. We see that the make file has been identified as a make file script in ASCII text. The file sample.message was not identifiable, so it was labeled with a generic data type. So if it's not ASCII text and it's not any special JPEG or Word or anything like that, then it's just generic data. This file we've already seen from before. And lastly, in this particular folder, we have a file called syslogo.ppm.gz, which file identified as a gzip compressed file, and it even has a last modified date and time. Let's get into some bonus material and see the forensic usages of these commands. One application of XXD, especially in the forensics world, is to see if a device is wiped with all zeros or a certain set pattern. Let's take a look at the optical drive of our machine, which is also known as slash dev slash sr0. So basically, I'm going to run XXD on our optical device, and I'm only going to look at the first four lines of the output. So one thing you notice here is that I've actually added the dash A option. And so the dash A option with XXD is the auto skip. What that will do is that it will compress all duplicate lines and substitute that with a star symbol. So let's take a look at what I'm actually talking about. So once I hit return, we're going to get this error that tells us we have permission denied. All right, so what's happening here is that in most Linux systems, some functions are pretty much geared towards only having the super user being allowed to do that. And the reason why the command failed is that we're using XXD to touch a hardware device, which in this case is slash dev slash sr0. Such a move is usually only allowed by the super user because it can cause grave damage to your system. So to get around that error, I'm going to add the command sudo to the beginning of that entire command. sudo allows a normal user to execute commands as the super user or another user. The super user, also known as root, is allowed to touch a hardware device because supposedly if you are root or allowed to execute as root, you know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and execute this command. So what we're going to see in the first line is that at byte offset 0, the data we have on this particular device is all zeros. Okay, then the next line, we're going to see the star, which means the subsequent lines after the initial line is all going to be the same as this line until it's not. Right, so until this offset at 8000 in hex, we see a content change from 0000, 000 to 0143, etc. So again, the star basically represents all the stuff in between, which is the same as the previous line. So using the xxd command, you can check whether a device has been wiped. 
And if your hard drive is wiped with all zeros, then the output of XXD with the dash A option would basically be one line full of zeros, and then a second line with an asterisk, and then it will end with the last byte offset of the file with nothing else in between. Let's take a look at an example. I've already wiped a drive known as slash dev sdd. So I'm going to go ahead and type xxd a of slash dev sdd. When I hit return, we are reminded that we need to use a sudo because we are touching a hardware device. So when we do sudo of xxd a of slash dev sdd, the output will show the first line of all zeros. And then the second line will be a star or asterisk to indicate that nothing has changed from the first line. And then when the drive has finished being read, the last line will start with the byte offset of the last byte of that drive and then zeros for the rest of the data. So once we see something that looks like this, we know that this drive has been wiped with all zeros. A forensic application using the file command would be if you're looking for files that have mismatching file extensions and file signatures. So remember that a file extension is any text that a user can change. But a file signature is harder to change because those are kind of set into the file itself. So let's take a look at this pre-made example I have. So we're going to run file on this file called slash tamping. Example files taxes. 2020.excel spreadsheet. All right, so if you take a look at this extension, this is a common extension that is used for Excel spreadsheets. But once we run the file command, we see that the file command identifies this as a JPEG file. In the law enforcement business, this is called a clue. It might be worth digging a little deeper to see why this is so. One thing you may have noticed earlier is that it appears that I was able to type in the path name of the file very quickly. I typed fast, but not that fast. I was actually using something called tab completion. With tab completion, you can just hit tab while typing a command, an option, or path name, and the shell will automatically complete what you're trying to type or suggest options for you. Let's say you want to run the xxd command. You can just type xx, and hit tab to see what commands are available on your system that starts with xx. In this case, xxd is the only command available that starts with xx, so that's what it fills in. It's the same thing for path names. You can do xxd of slash etsy slash and then capital x, and here if you just hit the tab, the system will fill in the words x11 because that is the only file in the slash etsy folder that starts with capital X. Let's continue on and type capital X and the lowercase s. At this point, if you hit tab, the system will fill in the rest of the name of any files that starts with the letters X, S. And in this case, it's X session. And if there are multiple files that starts with the letter XS, the system would give you as much as it matches, which is what we got so far, and then pause. Here, you can hit the double tab to see all the possibilities of matching files that starts with X session. In this case, we have three. And so to continue on, let's go ahead and hit period and then O, right? Because we want to match the file X sessions dot options. And then once again, you just hit tab, and it will fill it in. And it will get you the rest of the file. Here, what we're going to do is go ahead and type file again of slash temp. And I'm going to type in ex. And from here, I know that there's only one file that matches anything that starts with ex. So I'm going to hit tab. And then from here, I know that there's only one file that matches anything that starts with mu and I'm going to hit tab. And this gets us to where we were before, but it looks like we're typing really, really fast. So the great thing about file completion is two things. One is that it helps you type a lot faster. And two is that it actually helps with lessening the number of typos you have. 
Another application for using the file command is more for personal security. If you receive a mystery attachment in an email and you are not sure what the file is, one quick thing you can do is use the file command to look at the file signature to get a better idea of what it is you're clicking on. If you're told that the file is a video file, but the output of file tells you it is an executable, then you might want to be a little bit more uh, careful with that file. So example, if we do a file on this much watched movie, right? So by extension, by the file extension, you're led to believe that this is a movie file, right? A QuickTime movie file. But once the file program looks at it, it looks at the file signature and determines that it is a executable for a Intel machine. So this is something that you will probably not want to click on. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video where we learned about viewing binary files using the XXD and file commands. We also learned some command line tricks like using the arrow keys and tab completion. Hope you enjoyed it, and if so, click on the thumbs up icon to like this video. Please hit the subscribe button to get notified when the next video comes out. Also, please leave me messages in the comment section below so I know what you liked and didn't like, or what you may want to see in future videos. See you next time.